Yo, what's up you guys? Today I want to talk to you a little bit about fly tying and I want to give you guys five beginner tips for getting started in fly tying. So even if you already are a fly tire, I still think that there's information you can get out of this. This is just basically the information that I would have wanted to know when I started fly tying. It's the information that I would give a friend. You know, uh, it's the five things that I think would have provided me with the most value when I got started. So I thought that I would take this, this time to share them with you and hopefully they help you out on your journey as well. Okay, so the first thing that I would say is to spend most of your fly time budget on your vise. This thing is super important. It holds the hook. The better quality vise you get, the better experience you're going to have when it comes to tying a fly on it. So what I have here is a Rosenzetti Traveler vise. It's in the $200 range. You can get cheaper options, but I would suggest, if possible, getting up into that $100, $150, $200 range. Uh, it's a tool that will last a long time. I've had this thing for three or four years now, and it's almost like new still. It's awesome, I've tied everything on it. Uh, you can tie streamers, you can tie midges, anything will work on here. It's got this nice adjuster knob and a clamp, and you can quickly go, go through flies on it. Uh, it's rotary, it'll spin free. It's great, you can replace out the clamp if it gets worn out in the future. I don't think you're gonna have any problem with that, but if you do, you can change it out and it's just kind of bomb proof. It's in a small package, it works amazing. And that's, that's the first thing that I would tell you guys is to spend money on your vice because it really does matter. Okay, tip number two is to start simple. What I would suggest doing is simplifying the experience. And I know that when you first start out in fly fishing, you go into a fly shop and there's all these flies, there's all these options. And it's a similar sort of story when it comes to fly tying. Now you're just like, okay, now there's all these flies and now there's all these materials I need. So what I would say is that you should pick a single pattern and go out and buy the materials just for that one pattern. And you can come to the decision about what pattern you decide you're gonna tie just by going into your local fly shop and seeing what they suggest and then testing those flies out and seeing what you really like, what you have, what you think is awesome to fish and then pick that fly and buy just those patterns. Don't worry about any of the other materials, just buy the pattern, just buy the materials for that one pattern. Okay, the third tip that I would give you guys is to buy the highest quality hooks and beads that you can afford. That to me is one of the benefits of tying your own flies is that you get to use high quality materials and you can count on those materials and you can tie those patterns that you find in the shop to suit your situation. It, as you grow as an angler and as in your tying career, you will realize that you need a, a specific pattern to suit that specific need, right? And you can tie that yourself. You don't have to rely on a fly shop supply chain or a fly being sold out or not available anymore. You can control that. Say you want that, say that fly is only available in a size 16 and you wanna tie it down to a 20. Now you can and you couldn't buy that from the shop. So that's kind of the biggest benefit to me. As far as beads go, I really like Hannock tungsten beads. Those are my favorite, most consistent beads that I've found. Uh, and then for hooks, I like Folling Mill, Hannock, and Umpqua in no particular order. I use different versions of those for different things. Those are kind of my go-tos as far as hooks and beads are concerned. Okay, the fourth tip I would give you is to buy only the tools required for that one pattern that you've decided to tie. So today, we've got a whip finisher tool, we've got a pair of scissors, they can be any scissors, it doesn't really matter. I like to just use all-purpose scissors. We have a dubbing loop spinner tool that's super handy, uh, a Stonfo Velcro brush to brush things out with, and then we have a bobbin to hold our thread. You can use any bobbin, this is a little bit of a fancier one, but it doesn't really matter. Just something to hold your thread. So it's real simple, you can see five tools, that's all we need to tie this pattern besides the vise. And I just think that simplifying your tools, just like you simplified the materials and the pattern, and you know, you just bought what you needed for that one pattern, 
helps simplify the whole process of what you're doing. And you can get to know those tools before you move on to other patterns. So I'm gonna pick a fly here. I'm on the Umqua website and I'm just gonna go up to products. This is a great way of finding a pattern if you don't have a local fly shop that you can go and look at the flies. I'm gonna go to flies and I'll go to freshwater competition flies. I'm gonna scroll down and just find one that looks like it could be fun to tie. Let's go with the blowtorch in this kind of uh, hairsier variation. It's, it's kind of a newer pattern. And let's, let's, let's tie that fly. So if you see on the Umqua website, they've got, Devin's got a, a tutorial on how to tie this fly. So you can easily hunt down the materials for this fly and figure out what you need and to tie that fly. So it looks like we're gonna need some nano silk thread and an olive color. You could use tan, doesn't really matter. It just has to be a lighter color thread. And then we'll need the Mirage tinsel for the body, uh, to rib the body. And then some Glowbright for the tail. This is Glowbright number eight you can use. That's a great option. You can use all the Glowbright colors. And then let the hook, I'm going with a Umqua WG60 hook. It's a nice jig hook. It's a wide gap, works really well. Uh, a Hanuk bead to put on top of that. And then some CDC fibers for that collar and that hackle. And then hairs dubbing for the body. Right, that's all we need, and we're gonna tie that fly. So the fifth and final thing that I would say as we're tying this fly here is that you should tie that pattern until you have a total grasp on how to tie it. Check the commercial sample that you went and bought at the fly shop, check the photos out online, you know, on Umqua's website, this fly we're tying today, you can see really high quality detailed shots of this so you can get an idea of the proportions. But I would encourage you to tie that fly until it looks like it does on the website or in that tutorial video or, you know, from the fly shop. It should look similar. And once you've like kind of learned that, that skill set for that singular fly, it'll translate to other flies. You pick a new fly and all of a sudden you'll be like, oh, these skills I learned on that fly work really great for this new fly, right? And then that new fly, you'll learn one or two new things and you'll kind of build on that understanding of how to tie flies and it'll just propel from there and, and move you into the future. So, that's the last thing I would say is to tie until that fly looks really good. That's not to say that some of those starter flies might not catch fish. I'm sure they still will, but to develop that skill, you really need to practice. So that'd be my final tip is just to tie until it's right, until it's real good. So that's the advice that I would basically give a friend if they were getting into fly tying and, and kind of what I would tell them. And you know, it's really ultimately about simplification and making the process easier to grasp at the beginning, right? So just to summarize, you're getting the nice vise, it improves the experience and it makes it a lot easier to tie the flies. You're starting simple with one pattern. You're just buying the material for that pattern to simplify things. You're just buying the tools for that pattern, again, to simplify, and then you're practicing, right? And I suppose that kind of could be said about any activity that you're gonna start, but I think that with fly tying and fly fishing, the vast amount of decisions and choices is almost endless and it's vast. And you go into any average fly shop and they've got a thousand flies in the bins and you have no idea where to start. And really taking that down to just starting with one thing is the simplest way to break it all down and kind of learn and stair step your way up. You'll get to a point where you'll want, at least I do, all this control and endless options in your box so that you're never left in a situation on the river where you don't have the proper uh, fly for that situation. But like I said, start simple, take it from there. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What's one kind of tip that you would give a beginning fly tire? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what that is. I'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, I know this video was slightly different than what we normally do, but if you're enjoying it and you enjoy these type of videos, hit that like button so I know and subscribe and 
See you guys next week. Till then, catch fish. Oh.